Hi friends, in this video, I want to present to you three high growth sectors and within those three high growth sectors, I want to talk about some of the stocks that are growing at a higher rate than other stocks within that sector. Because if you are able to identify such stocks, then our return on investment is likely to be higher. So the first sector that I want to talk about is microfinance sector. Have a look at my screen and you will see that in the last one year, it has grown by close to 24.3%. And within the microfinance sector, if you look at the dominant players, you will see that NBFCs capture 40% market share followed by banks at 32% and then small financing bank at 17%. Simply put together, microfinance sector is a high growth sector and within that, NBFC companies have captured close to 40% of the market share. Therefore, in the first section of this video, I'm going to talk about the NBFC stocks and which are the good NBFC stocks within the microfinance sector. So what you see on my screen is I am considering top 500 stocks listed on the National Stock Exchange. And also I'm only looking at the consumer finance sector that gives me 12 stocks totally. And what I've done is I've arranged them in the order of higher net profit margin in the last five years. So if you look at here, five star business finance limited has given close to 36% net profit margin in the last five years from an average perspective, followed by Muthut Finance Limited, Mannapuram Finance Limited, Sundaram Finance Limited, Bajaj Finance Limited, and so on. If you look at the last financial year's net profit margin, again, five star business finance limited has given close to 39%. And you can see other stocks, how they're stacking up here. Point is simple. In the last five years, the top five companies from an average net profit margins is what we can consider. But please also understand that the net profit margin alone does not tell you that the stock is a growing stock because a company which is making good net profit margin also need to increase the top line or the revenues at a higher rate than other companies. So for that, what I've done is I'm going to analyze these five stocks in front of you and let's try and have a look at the revenue growth in these five stocks. So the first one is the five star business limited. Simply I'm on screener and you will see that from March 2018 onwards up to March 2023, the revenues of this company has grown from 196 crores to 1500 crores, meaning it has grown closely nine times in the last five years, which is a phenomenal growth. And that is why if I come back and show you the PE minus sector PE of this company, it is trading at 21 higher premium than the sector PE. So clearly this NBFC is enjoying the premium in the market because of the reason that in the last five years, average net profit margins have been really high. And also from a revenue growth perspective, it has done nine times. But one thing you will notice is that this is still a very small company, but a very, very good growth company. Let us now move to the second one. The second one that we have in our list is Muthut Finance Limited. So if you go to Muthut Finance revenue track record from 2018 onwards, it has grown from 6,000 crore to 10,000 crore. So it has gone roughly 1.5 times in terms of the revenue growth. But you will also notice that in the last three years, the revenues have been sort of stagnant here. Let us go to the third one, which is Mannapuram Finance Limited again from 2018 onwards. If you see, the revenues have almost doubled from 3,400 to 6,600. But again, last three years, if you look at it, the revenues have stagnated here. The fourth one that we are going to look at is the Sundaram Finance Limited from 2018 onwards, 6,000 crore revenues have gone to close to 6,000 only. So the company in the last five years is stagnating from a top line growth perspective. And the last one that we want to look at is Bajaj Finance Limited that has grown from 12,000 crore. Now, this is a big scale here we're talking about as compared to other companies that we saw. From 12,000 crore, it has gone to 48,000 crore in the last trailing 12 months. And that is almost four times. Now, the four times growth at the scale of this revenue, which is 12,000 is phenomenal. So from a growth perspective, Bajaj Finance, no doubt is a leader in the NBFC space. And if we come back and have a look at the PE minus sector PE of Bajaj Finance, you will see that it is again very much similar to five star business. It is trading at a 21 higher PE than the sector PE. Clearly, it is enjoying market's attention because of high profit margins as well as high growth at a scale, which is what really matters. So clearly, Five Star Business Finance Limited and Bajaj Finance are two high growth stocks within the NBFC sector. But if you look at the Five Star Business Finance Limited and we talk about the future prospect of this company, future growth of this company, what you will notice is that this is mainly in the south of the India, like states in Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, and so on versus Bajaj Finance, which is more pan India 
presence. What it tells us is that the growth that is likely to happen in the next few years, unless five star business goes pan India, the growth is going to be limited in five star business versus Bajaj Finance that has already got the presence across the pan India. So my pick right now from these two perspective will be Bajaj Finance Limited. Not a recommendation for you to invest in this company, but I've simply done the analysis and have shortlisted these stocks based on these analysis. But the big problem that we have with high growth stocks is the valuation. They are at high valued because you can see clearly from a PE minus sector PE perspective, Bajaj Finance is at 21 higher PE than the sector PE. And in such cases, what really makes sense is buying these stocks at the dip. So if we currently look at Bajaj Finance, you will see that in the last one month, when I'm recording this video on 16th of November, in the last one month, Bajaj Finance is down by close to 10%. And just yesterday, a news came out in the market where RBI is ordering Bajaj Finance to stop lending via e-com and Insta EMI card with immediate effect because of they're not following certain processes or regulatory norms that the RBI has set up for them. What it is going to do is in the short term, the stocks prices are going to fall, which is what we have recently seen as well. And in such cases, if you go back to one year track history, you will see that these dips become good opportunities for people to accumulate such stocks because fundamentally the company is strong. But from a long term perspective, Geo Finance is entering into this market. I did a full video on Geo Finance that you can go and watch. I will put the link in the description. And overall, NVFC sector, from my perspective, is a high growing sector. And you need to do full fundamental analysis of such companies to be able to take positions because I've only scratched the surface here. On my YouTube member community, I also do in-depth fundamental analysis of such stocks. Bajaj Finance, I'm going to do in the next one week and I'll post it for my community. If you want to get into more details of stocks, mutual funds and any other assets, then you can consider subscribing to my YouTube member community because you will get more information there as well for you to make good informed decision about investing. So far, if you're liking this video, a humble request for you to hit the like button and also let me know in the comments a simple thank you. It will motivate me to come up with such videos more often. Also a quick announcement. I've also started my Hindi YouTube channel. You will find the link in the description. You can also go and watch those videos. And if you like them, you can consider subscribing. With that, let us move to my sector number two, which is AMC sector asset management companies within India. Simply put mutual fund companies and what you see on my screen is nowadays a lot of companies are jumping into AMC business. So for example, Zeroda lately announced, Helios recently announced and many other such companies which are jumping into the AMC business. Why it is happening? Because of the growth in AMC business. Have a look at my screen. You will see that the industry is growing at close to 15 to 20% annually, which is not a bad growth. Also, if you look at SIPs, monthly SIPs back in 2016 used to be around 3000 crores. It has gone up to 15,000 crore plus. So a five time growth in the last five to seven years. And the reason people are jumping into mutual funds is because technology is simplifying it. People like me creating a lot of awareness around mutual funds. So you can consider subscribing to my channel for mutual funds as well. But the point remains same that the AMC businesses within India are continuing to grow. That's why Geo also announced that they are also going to launch their AMC business as part of Geo Financial Services. I covered that in my Geo's video. You can go ahead and watch that video after this video. But the million dollar question is which are the good AMC stocks? So for that, what I've done is I've gone into ticker tape and what I've done is I've filtered out asset management related companies and it gives me total five stocks and I've arranged them in the five year average net profit margins order perspective. And you will see that Bajaj Holdings and Investment Limited is showing the highest five year average net profit margin, but I'm not going to consider this stock simply because it is not purely AMC business. If you go to Bajaj Holdings website, you will see that Bajaj Holding and Investment Limited has more than 30% stake in Bajaj Auto Limited, Bajaj FinServe Limited. So it is not purely AMC business. Many people do not even understand how the Bajaj as a group is organized in terms of where is Bajaj Auto Limited sitting in Bajaj Group? Where is Bajaj FinServe? Where is Bajaj Finance? Where is Bajaj Holdings and Investment Limited? So that's a topic for some other day where I can just talk about Bajaj as a group and how these companies are inter related and the opportunities that it presents for us. But coming back to this analysis here, I will clearly say that Bajaj Holding and Investment Limited is not a pure play AMC right now. So I am not considering this into this analysis because of that reason. That brings us to Tata Investment, HDFC AMC, Nippon Life India and UTI. Now, if you look at the revenue growth of these companies, so if I come back to Tata Investment Corporation, you will see that from COVID time perspective, September 2020 onwards, the revenues almost from 75 crore has gone up to 124 crore. So a growth of 1.8 times roughly. Have a look at the HDFC AMC 456 crore to 643, roughly the same 1 1.5, 1 1.6 sort of a growth. 
Nippon India, if you look at that, 259 to 397, again in the same range. And UTI as well from 276 crores to 404 crores. So all in all, from a top line perspective, all the four stocks are really trading at the same level, roughly between 1.5 to 1.8, 1.9 times of growth. And same is the case with their net profits as well. So how do we find out which one is a more quality stock? So a simple criteria that I really like to use is operating margin percentage. So what you see is operating profit margin percentage. And you will see in the case of Tata Investment Corporation, it is close to 90%, 94%, meaning the Tata is running very lean operations. Their expenses are very low. Their revenues are growing, but the expenses are maintained at a consistent level, meaning that they're able to generate more operating margin. Have a look at HDFC AMC. It is at close to 70s, high 70s. Look at Nippon here. It is close to 60%. And if you look at the UTI, looks close to 40%, 60%, 57%. So clearly you will see that Tata has got a better operating model or Tata is able to generate better operating margin percentage as other companies. And number two is HDFC. And this is why if you look at Tata investment is trading at 47 higher premium than the sector PE and HDFC is trading at 23 higher PE than the sector PE. So both the companies are good companies from a MC business perspective. But when it comes to valuation perspective right now, HDFC seems to be slightly reasonably placed as compared to Tata investment. And again, when I come to growth stocks, I keep telling people that my view is that if you're investing in growth stocks, please make sure you do not buy the stocks when the prices are growing. You need to wait for corrections in the stock. So right now, for example, if you look at the trend, HDFC in the last one month has corrected by close to 3.29% might be a good opportunity. I don't know. I'm not recommending it to you. But if you look at the Tata here, Tata Investment Corporation in the last one month still growing. You need to find the good entry points and the simple logic could be buying these companies on dips. But please do not take this as a recommendation. A big disclaimer, I am not recommending any stocks for you. I'm simply telling you an approach how to go about finding any stocks within a sector so that you can go ahead and do your own research. The third and the last sector that I think is going to see really good growth in coming years is roads. So for that, have a look at my screen and you will see that the total capital investment that is going to happen in the roads and renewables is going to jump by 35% to rupees 13 lakh crores. So the companies that are building roads, highways, uh, bridges, etc., are going to see a lot of growth in the coming years because of the lot of capital investments going to happen in the roads, highways and in infrastructure sector. So from that perspective, it becomes important for us to analyze the companies that are operating in the sector. For which what I've done is I've gone to the ticker tape and I've selected five stocks that are into building roads, bridges, water-based projects and things like that. And what you will see that if I arrange these in the five years average net profit margin perspective, so that we understand which are the more growing stocks, you will see that KNR Construction is number one, followed by Wellspan Enterprise Limited, SGA Infra, PNC Infratech, J Kumar Infrastructure and so on. But if you look at the net profit margin in the last financial year, you will see that Wellspan has done much better than other peers. In fact, the net profit margin it has delivered is almost twice than other companies. From a valuation perspective, if you look at the PE minus sector PE, this is right now the most undervalued stock when we look at these five stocks. Also from a peg ratio perspective, it is the lowest right now. But more importantly, we need to look at whether the company is going to grow in the next few years or not for which I recently had created a detailed post on my YouTube member community talking about the order book because order book is extremely important from a future growth perspective. And if we see these three companies, I analyze three companies there, you will see that the order book of Wellspan is close to 9,600 crores as of June 2023 and their yearly revenues are 2,758 crores, meaning that they at the time of June 2023, three times more than the revenues, the order book, meaning that in the next few years, they are going to potentially double their revenues very easily as compared to HG Infra and JK Infra that has close to 2x their order book as well as JK Infra has close to three times their order book. So whenever you are analyzing infra sector stocks, what you really need to focus on is the order book. And you will easily find that information in the quarterly results that the company publish. It's an extremely, extremely important point. I'm reiterating again and again, because unless you look at the order book, you're not likely to anticipate the future growth in the company. Again, not a recommendation for you to invest in Wellspan enterprises. But what I do generally is share detailed analysis on such stocks on my YouTube member community, you can consider subscribing because you're likely to get a lot of information there so that you, when you make decisions, you are making informed decisions rather than 
just relying on your luck or your chances or gambling your money a big disclaimer that please do not take any stocks as recommendation from this video make sure you do your own full research on these stocks before making investment decisions because it's your money your decision with that i'll see you in my next video until then keep rocking <laughs>